way, we have David Ray Griffin on tomorrow debunking the 9-11 debunkers, going over all the huge new developments on 9-11. But from 11.30 to 1, in the first two hours tomorrow, we're going to have part two of this. It's clear this information is too powerful. I believe that this high-level globalist, and I happen to know who it is, uh, you know, Lindsay didn't break his promise. I've been interviewing him so long. I know who the three CEOs were that he mentioned by name earlier from the oil companies he worked at and for. And so then I've narrowed it down. But the point is, is that uh, this is fitting in with all the other Bilderberg info we have. I believe Lindsay when he called and said he had inside knowledge two years ago, uh, almost a year, almost two years ago, more than a year and a half ago, that it would go up to uh, the oil would go down to fifty dollars a barrel and stay there for a year, and it did that. Incredible prediction. No one saw that coming. But then I noticed in our own Bilderberg coverage, it was a footnote from Jim Tucker and a footnote from Daniel Estelin that inside sources said Bilderberg was going to cut oil in half from one hundred and fifty to below seventy. That happened. So. Again, people ask, how do I know what's credible? How do I know what's not? Well, number one, has somebody been accurate over and over again? Yes. Number two, does it fit in with all the other intel I have? Yes. Now, could they alter something maybe down the road? If we get involved, if we speak up, if we say no. But America is has capitulated. The United States has given in to tyranny. And once they know you've capitulated and will put up with anything then that's when the real tyranny starts. All the tyranny and corruption we've seen is only the beginning. I was just shown a video of police in Milwaukee, a guy on a bike, the police say stop, try to taser him, the guy gets scared. The police run him over in the car, killing him, admitting they wanted to kill him, and then the police are heroes on the news. That's pure evil. Just like they rubber bullet people to death and they killed a guy in... in um, Seattle last year, the guy just comes outside from a store. They think he's another suspect. They they come over. He gets scared by the cop, kind of turns. The cop knocks him up, hits the ground, kills him. The cops are on the TV saying, we don't care. We didn't do anything wrong. They've dehumanized us, and the police themselves are dehumanized. Uh, but, I mean, they just murder this guy and don't care. Stormtroopers of death, ladies and gentlemen. And I know the average cop is an evil person in and of themselves, but the mantle, the system, the training. Uh, anyway, side issue. It's just God help us all. We are an evil nation. We are now being brought to judgment. Now, Lindsey Williams, you've always been credible. And I believe that this high-level retired executive who's almost died recently did spill his guts to you. Charlotte Iserby was the number two at Department of Education. She said they were planning year-round schooling a decade ago on this show. Everything she said is now coming true. She wrote a book the size of a Dallas phone book that we sell, by the way, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, and it's mainly just documents. So I know this is their plan. Just like I read, they plan to ban most air travel. It's now mainstream news today. Uh, I knew they had face scanning and, and license plate reading stuff 12 years ago. Now it's mainstream news. So, so Charlotte Iserby's father, he was Skull and Bones and Bohemian Grove and always kind of laughed at her and her anti New Order stance. She was taking care of him while he was dying of cancer. And he would hear her doing radio interviews. And about a month before he died, he accepted Jesus. I know people don't like to hear this, but this is what got him to come out of his, 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 his situation. And he, he cried and said, yes, basically it's Satanism. And repented and said, I wish I was well to go back and tell the other guys that they shouldn't be part of this. And I want to tell the police that you've got time to turn back, but you are the army of Satan now. I mean, the, 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 I mean, you, even if you don't believe in God, this is satanic. This is evil. What else do you call it? Now, Lindsay, I'm going to shut up because I got a few other things I got to cover too. I said I interspersed some news that I've got, but, but you're back tomorrow. Thank God for that. But, but, but just, just do this. Go over the bullet points quickly. Then they got page after page, a prelude for tomorrow. But then go back to this guy saying how they've taken over the churches and the devil's. What was the term he used? The devil's. Uh, devil's Messiah. The devil's Messiah. So, so, so and, and at the elite level, 
They're all into Luciferianism. There's no doubt. Uh, I mean, that's been in their own documents. This is so insane, but it's real. Uh, continue. Alex and everybody out there in the listening audience, they're positively, I, I, just, I must emphasize this, there positively is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. Uh, you've had Alex say this over and over and over. I'm punctuating it again right now. There is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. They are for real. They know what they're doing. They are able to accomplish what they want. They control Congress. They control the president. And by the way, they're having trouble with this president. Whenever I get, I think I'll probably save that for tomorrow. Uh, they did want McCain as president. And, and, you know, I said that last year, and then somebody afterwards said, no, they didn't get McCain in. They really flubbed up, didn't they? Well, they did, and they did. Uh, you know, they are not divine. They think they are, but they aren't. And when they didn't get McCain in, they're having trouble. And this gentleman went on to tell me the trouble they're having with Mr. Obama and they had some choice words. Oh, my gracious, I'd shake in my shoes if I was Mr. Obama right now because the elite don't like his arrogance, pride, and the, some of the other things he's doing. Okay, let's get back to this. They do exist. This man told me what they're doing. You're right about the other gentleman who, uh, on his deathbed, said, don't follow these people. They're positively Satanist. One of the first things I learned when I lived with the elite years ago was to listen to their buzzwords. I'd like to, to read you a few buzz, buzzwords that this man used, and I want you to, to quickly, in your mind, think, what is the very first thing you think about whenever I give you these buzzwords? Now, these are his exact statements, and whenever I read you his buzzwords, I know how to, uh, to understand them because I learned years ago to read between the lines, listen to their buzzwords, and then know what they're talking about. Okay, I'm going to read you his buzzwords, word for word, and then the first thing that pops in your mind that you think these buzzwords mean. Here goes, number one. War brought the country out of the Depression. The second buzzword. Turmoil in the Middle East two years from now. The next buzzword. Iran's eter external enemy... Israel. I wrote these down as he was saying them. Another buzzword. Crude oil will stay 70 to $50 until the next crisis in the Middle East. The next buzzword. Nearly everyone will be working for the government. And what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you hear something like that? Communism. Yeah. I mean, total control and war. War. Listen to this. War brought the country out of the first one. Turmoil in the Middle East. Iran's eternal, external enemy, Israel. Crude oil, stay there until the Middle East crisis, and they already have it planned. You remember back two years ago, Alex, and I said this on your show. He said, we don't want war with Iran. And here all of our battleships were lined up over in the Persian Gulf. Our, they, they were on uh, ready and alert. Everything was right, ready. The, the, the Air Force, man, we, we had nearly everything in the way of armament right over there in the Middle East, ready for something to take place in the Strait of Hormuz. And then this man told, and I was, I was predicting it, as was most other talk show hosts, that we were going to have war with Iran in the very near, near term, and that was a year and a half ago. And this man said to me, we do not want war with Iran. I came on radio talk shows, and some of the talk show hosts got upset at me because they were saying we're going to have war with Iran. And I said, this man said, we don't want war with Iran right now. Now he turns around and he says, we've extended our timeline. And he says, here's the new timeline. And he says, Iran is in the picture, but it's in the picture for approximately two years from now. So I'm warning you, uh, what we thought was going to take place a year and a half to two years ago, you've got it down the line two years from now, and it's going to break out and spread all over the world at the time it happens, and he used buzzwords that indicated to me that they have something definitely in the wind for that period of time. I'm just telling you what this gentleman says. Believe me, for 35 years, all I have ever done is voiced what the elite have told me. I'm just a little everyday sort of a guy. Believe me, I am not 